Hello and you're very welcome. My name is Fidel Mahili Eames. I'm the Director of Study and Careers and the author of this programme I'm introducing to you this evening, Switching On for Learning, Becoming an Independent Learner. Thank you so much for joining me and I'm very aware that you may be a parent, a teacher or a student listening to this presentation this evening. So just to get right into it then, this is a new blended learning programme available on an online platform for the first time. The purpose of it is to ease your way back into school and to get your mindset right. And that is everything really, having the right mindset. And in the words of William Shakespeare, all things are ready if our mind be so. So what's the rationale for this programme, switching on for learning, becoming an independent learner? Well, as you know, learning to learn is an essential skill and mindset for life and future learning. It's always been needed and it will serve you well. Traditionally and normally, I should say, we would be delivering this as a face to face course. But in the current environment of COVID-19, that's no longer reliable. And, you know, COVID-19 is threatening our education as we've known it with the amount of uncertainty it's presenting us with. We cannot let that happen. So for that reason, we have made this available as an online course for you. Now, in my view, there are many advantages to an online course and a blended learning approach for students, parents and teachers. The great thing is the material is always available to you at the right time when you're ready to learn. When I go into schools, I may be there for a day or two days. Not every student's head is in the right space at that time. Sometimes the material may not seem relevant to them at that time. But when a student enrolls in this programme, they have it available to them until June 1st, 2021. So they can dip into it as they need it. So what are the unique features of our online programme? Well, first of all, there's real online teaching and learning of about 10 hours of teacher and student engagement and content across six modules. There's videos with students ages from 12 to 20 years of age and obviously teachers teaching and some topic experts across the course modules, particularly in the module around managing stress. This, as I say, is a proven course. It's tried and trusted content delivered over many years. What's different now is that it's available for the first time in a newly developed blended online course. In each of the modules, you'll see downloadable resources and they are very deliberately there to ensure the student is active in their own learning. And as I'm teaching the course, I want them to apply the learning to themselves and their own life. And what's really important is what they learn about themselves. And one of the winning features of this course is that there is a discussion forum attached to each module. So if a student has concerns or questions, they can pop them into the discussion forum and we will get back to them. And as I say, it is yours once you enrol for the full academic year up to June 1st, 2021. Now, it's not the first time we've been in this field. I have published previously a text there called Switching On for Learning, a Student Guide to Exam and Career Success. And many schools have purchased this for their classes. And also a student booklet called Successful Studying. So this course is for you, the learner, very deliberately to make learning easier for you. It's something I'm really passionate about. And how do we do that? Well, first of all, by building your self-belief in you as a learner, but secondly, by equipping you with study, mindset and learning strategies that you can apply to your own work. And ultimately, with the aim of enabling you to be more confident to take control of your own learning. So what do students tell us? What do they say is hard for them about study and learning? Well, here are some of the things they've said. I find it hard to get started. Don't know where to start. I can't concentrate. Don't feel like it sometimes. Don't have the time, miss, they might say. Don't see the point of it. Just too much reading, too much to do. Too many chapters in every textbook. Find it difficult to remember. I'm worried about tests or going blank on the day. I feel stressed and worried I won't get the points for the course I want. And 
you know, to put this into context, now I'm going to show you a little video of students talking to me about this very issue. And we like to think that this is very real. And my approach throughout is to draw the students out so that we see them coming up with the answers themselves so that from the outset, it's all very real for them. So enjoy this now. Well, good morning and thank you so much for being here. Look, I'm going to start off and in, in terms of our course, Switching On for Learning, uh, Becoming an Independent Learner, I suppose the first thing I want to ask you is what is the purpose of study? Isabel? To get good results in your tests. To get good results in your tests, okay, fair enough. Sheen? Uh, to be more familiar with the work that, you, that you're doing. Great. Very good. Sarah? And to retain information you can put in class. Okay, to retain information, to get better results, to be more familiar with your work. What, what's the ultimate purpose of study? Sophie, what would you say? Um, to learn the information. Yeah, it's to learn, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Now, all of your answers are correct, of course, but the ultimate purpose of study is to learn. So can we look then at what is hard about study? Or Emily. The fact that there's so many subjects and you have to like learn the information for every single one. Okay, so, so many subjects. Very good. So it's fair to say with so many subjects, it's like a big load, isn't it? Okay, we'll say that. Anything else? What else is hard, Sophie? Uh, like focusing on topics in extreme detail. Okay, so actually the word focus is a very good word because even focusing is a big issue when it comes to study. And also you mentioned focusing in detail. Can you give me an example of what you're saying there, Sophie? I know you're going into leave insert now. Um, for like, you know, economics or something, you'll need to know like every detail, every definition mm -hmm. might not even come up. Exactly. So the whole issue of definitions is, is, is one there. And I know that's also an issue in subjects like science for junior cert. Okay, okay. Anything else, Sarah? What about you? And uh, knowing where to start. Very good. It's where to start. And that is an issue for many, many students. Where to start and how to get started. Okay, very good. Anything else? What else is hard about study? Well, I'm not getting distracted by other things. Fantastic. So learning to concentrate, isn't it? And dealing with distractions. Okay, eliminating distractions. Okay, so now at the moment we have, we're looking at how to focus, how to concentrate, where to get started, dealing with the entire load. Anything else, guys? What? Yes, Emily. Well, like sometimes you don't know how to study, you've never studied before, so like different methods you might know what to do. Fabulous, absolutely. How to study. Because guess what? Sometimes, We've assumed foolishly that children know how to study. There's actually methods and methodologies and strategies to how to study. OK, thank you very much for that. OK, so let's look at the course content then to address the students' concerns. And every concern that the, student has, the students have brought up and more are addressed across the six modules in our course. Module one there is how your brain works and learning styles. And it's one students really enjoy. They love finding out more about themselves. Module two, motivation and concentration, really critical because once our students have a goal and something they're aiming for, the work is that much easier. Then managing time is module three and learning to plan. And that takes so much stress out of their work. It's a critical skill to give them. Module four is really the meat of the programme, the study and learning strategies, reading to learn and learning to summarise. That's a very big skill. And module five looks at memory and recall and setting up their own study review system. And we give lots of guidance there. And finally, module six is sitting the exam, exam techniques and managing stress, which, of course, is not just limited, managing stress is not just limited to module one, it's touched on across all of the modules and so important for student wellness and well-being.
Now, there is an, a little bit about the the objectives we hope to achieve, but I'll touch on them now in the, the various modules. So now I'm going to look with you at some samples of the downloadable resources from module one to six. Module one looks at how your brain works and learning styles. And the purpose here is to enable the student to understand their brain and their learning styles. And here's just one of the activities. If I look, first of all, at the left and right brain hemispheres, and you can see there that the left brain is the more logical side, the more structured side of the brain. It likes to plan. It likes order. It likes to be even on time. The right side of the brain, on the other hand, is the more imaginative and creative side. Um, it's into feelings, movement, colour. And, you know, we obviously want the student to develop their whole brain. So here we, we do this little activity with them then. And this is just one of seven activities in this module where we ask them to complete this checklist where they compare across. So, for example, do you like to make lists, which would be a left brain dominant tendency? Or are you more unstructured? Are you organised? Or are you messy? And by the end of this activity, they begin to see, look, I have more left brain tendencies than right brain or vice versa. But what we really want them to look at is how to begin to use their whole brain. But this is very interesting, this activity. And you'll hear it in many of the videos throughout the course that they actually quite enjoy this because they're really fascinated with learning more about themselves. And what they discover here is, OK, well, I'm quite messy and unstructured, so perhaps I need a strategy there. So therefore, looking at module three, learning to plan would be vital for them. So there's that sense of self-discovery. Module two, getting motivated. And the aim here is to help them tap into their, their motivation, their own essence and what drives them and their desires and the power of their subconscious mind. Like this activity here helps them to set their goals and a goal isn't real unless they know why it matters to them. So we do a lovely visualisation exercise on the course with them before they complete this activity. Because they need to have the context set properly for them. And then we look at long range goals where you might like to be in five years time or three years time or what, depending on the age of the student right down to short term goals. Like, for example, if your goal is to do law or to become a mechanic in terms of your career, what should you be doing now? And then that transfers over here to helping them to set their target grades for their different exams and their different subjects. So, for example, in English, if a student's target grade in the next exam is to get, for example, a B, a B1, well, then what they do along here then is they begin to pop in the grades they get from their teachers on the way to that exam. And so they, they begin to monitor their own progress. And by doing so, they're taking charge and taking responsibility for themselves and their own, their own behaviour really around their study and learning. Module three looks at managing time and learning to plan. The aim here being to enable students to make better use of their time and to learn how to plan. And every student has a homework diary, but they don't all make great use of it. So we ve we're very specific with our guidance here. The minute you get your homework, for example, in French, learn the present tense of the ER verb. You write that down specifically, not just French, maybe the page number due on Wednesday. But the minute they get it, we advise them that they estimate the amount of time that will take them to do that evening. If they do that with each item of homework that, that's been assigned during the day, they'll already begin to plan their evening and they'll be taking more responsibility for their work. Now, this is a very simple thing to do, but many don't do it. And it's a metacognitive strategy. And we talk to them about that whole area of metacognition where they begin to think about their own thinking. And over here on the right, then, we have a study to do list or a study plan. A very simple idea again that, for example, they would make their plan on the Sunday night for the rest of the week 
or at the very least the night before the need to do it. So we're teaching them the concept of advanced planning because obviously it's not a great idea to sit down to a blank desk not knowing what I'll do. It's one way to waste time and lose motivation. So, for example, when it comes to planning, they'd be very specific. In geography, I want to do erosion and deposition. When will I do it? I'll do it on Monday night for 15 minutes. And how will I study erosion and deposition? I'm going to make a Venn diagram where I'll compare and contrast them and then test myself. Now, here you'll see some strategies which we teach in the next module. Module four is reading to learn and learning to summarize. One of the techniques in here is a chapter reading technique called PQRR. The P is for preview. The Q is for set your focus questions. R is for read and the final R is for review. Now, this is a very important strategy because students often get buried under chapter reading. So how do they preview a chapter? They preview the chapter by looking at the headings, looking at the diagrams and charts, reading the summary, which is likely to be in the opening and closing paragraph. So that might only take them three to four minutes to do. What do they achieve by doing that? They get the gist of what the chapter is about. As a result of that, then, they set their focus questions. This is the reason they'll be reading. This is a very good skill to teach students. So how will they come up with their focus questions? They'll come up with them as a result of previewing the chapter. Or if they're not sure, they can go to the end of the chapter where generally there are questions set there. So, for example, they may set five focus questions. That'll be their purpose for reading. Then they read to find those answers and they pop their answers in there. And the final R is review, where they maybe come up with a little symbol or a diagram or a keyword to remind them of that answer. OK, so that's really useful. But we do teach that in the course. Memory and recall. Now, I'm introducing you here to the whole value of memory and recall, how the short and long term memory work and leading into the real importance of the student learning to summarise. So I want you to take a few minutes now and enjoy this video. Okay, so Sophie, at the outset you said remembering so much detail is difficult, isn't it? So Do you know that we have a short-term memory and a long-term memory? Have you heard of that? Okay, so let me tell you where they are. The short-term memory is in here. It's, and actually feel that area for yourselves there. It's the frontal lobe of the brain. Now, I have good news and bad news about this. The good news is this is the higher order thinking area. And the more often you're in there, the better. But the bad news is it's a very small space. It's really key for processing. They say only about nine pieces of information fit there. It's like a shelf. So when the 10th piece comes in or the 11th piece comes in, it pushes something else out. So if you need to remember what it's pushing out, where do you need to put it? Memory. Into your long-term memory. Absolutely, Emily. So the long-term memory is in different lobes of the brain, but a lot of people say it's here, over the ears, the limbic brain. So let me just draw you this now, right? So I'm going to say, here we have like the short-term or working memory. We call it STM. And here we have the long-term memory. Right? So the, the good news is when you're using your short term memory, it's fantastic. But what's the bad news about it? Stuff gets pushed out. It's just a small space, but it's absolutely key for processing. So what do you do, Sarah, if you want to move something from short to long term memory? Um, you have to like, go multiple times to make sure that it goes in. You have to which? Read over. Yeah, very good. So read over. Very good. Anything else? What would you do to move something from short to long term memory? Um, write it out. Write it out. Very good. Jeremith, you said you'd imagine it, right? You'd use your visual sense, right? Very good. Anything else? Any other good way to check if you know it, Sean? Uh, test it. 
test myself. Good man yourself. You'd self-test. Fantastic. Self-test and self-evaluate. Okay. So this is why teachers tell you all the time. What do they say to you to do? Test yourself. Test yourself. What else? They tell you to? Study. study. Very good. And revise or revisit it. Go back and look at it again. And that the whole reason is, is to move something from short to long term memory. As well as the fact that this is a small space and you can lose it quickly. There's something called a forgetting curve. And the bad news is within 24 hours, we forget up to 80% of what we've heard. Unless we do something with it. Unless we read over it or write it out, perhaps, or even do an experiment or, you know, shuffle those cards with your ideas on it or go and tape yourself. Do you understand me? So what I'm saying is you've got to do something with it. So this is why what I'm strongly recommending and what teachers say to you is, number one, do your homework the night you get it, right? Because if you do your homework, you're recalling it again and you're helping to embed it in long-term memory. Number two, if you some do, do some independent study on it, you're seeing it again with a view to maybe being able to replicate it or give it back, all right? And that's going to help embed it in long-term memory. Certain things that you couldn't do as a baby or a little child you can do now. For example, learning to ride a bike. How did you learn to ride a bike? Dear Trial and error. Trial and error. Very good. Anything else? I tried myself. Shown the visual. Tried the practice. So practice, practice, practice. That's what puts it in long-term memory. But I have another bit of good news. And it's this. The more you do the homework and the independent study, the more hooks you'll have in here to link into long-term memory. So the teacher comes along tomorrow and teaches you some new information in your maths or your French or science or whatever subject. And if you've already heard a little bit about that before, you'll have a hook in there and you'll have something to hook it onto. That's called um, accessing prior learning, learning you've learned before. Do you understand what I'm saying there? when you have something in there already that reminds you of it and it triggers you and you form a link. So that's really, really important. And this is really explaining why it's so important to actually review your work, to keep the recall high. If you do your homework the night you get it, you're staying inside the 24 hours. And even better news, and this is something I, we do in the course, with the students, if you make a five minute summary, if you spend five minutes doing a summary of what you've learned that day and file that summary away in a review folder, date it, note the chapter it relates to in the book and note the topic, you will have captured a short summary of what it is you need to remember and the meaning of that learning. Does that make sense? Boys and girls, if you start making your five-minute summaries, you'll be on the pig's back. You will be able to take control of your learning and be in charge. Yes. And do you have to go into detail or just say, let's say, if you were like learning a certain verb in French, would you say that verb or would you list out the verb? Or? Well, you see, the thing is, if you keep doing your summaries, first of all, a summary should be on one A4 page, no more. Okay, there's some evidence to say it should be landscape because the memory loves landscape. All right. In other words, let's say, for example, there, let's say there's your, for the sake of argument, your A4 page landscape. And let's say you're doing your ER verbs. Um, well, you might be at this point in French where you've done ER verbs, IR verbs, and RE verbs. Are you with me? So you might just do a little example of a regular verb in each of them. Like you could have manger, finir, vendre. Do you follow me? And that could be your summary. That one page could be a summary of week's work. Date that summary. What day is today? Oh, we'd say the 6th of August, 2020. And here you're going to be filing it away then in your French review folder. So anyway, so do you get the idea? Yeah. Now, by the way, that summary also could have other examples. You could have examples of other RE verbs here, other ER verbs, other IR verbs. 
you know, make your page dense. Make it serve you. Make your summaries work for you. That's the whole point of it. Okay, so this brings us now to module four, which is learning to summarize. And it's a continuation of the module I had shown you before the video there. Now, you'll have noticed that we ended up speaking about summarizing with the students at the end of that video. And certainly it was something that seemed to really matter to them. So let's just look here. For example, we have a dense piece of text here called Shakespeare's Dramas. And you'll see in the course, should the students decide to enroll, you'll see that they get to actually summarize this. And when they summarize, they wouldn't necessarily have the best strategies always. So here I show them how to summarize this piece of text in a table format. This piece of text talks about Shakespeare's life across three stages, early, middle and late. It talks about the genre of his work the mood that influenced the plays during the different phases in his life. And really, they actually love this format. It's structured. They find it easy to review. I have done this strategy with thousands of students. They've always really related well to it because they see how much easier it is to study something like that when it's organised. OK. Moving on to module five then, which is memory and recall and setting up a study review system. Here we're looking at enabling the student to make remembering easier. And there's lots of lovely activities in this whereby they test themselves on a set of 14 words, they test themselves on very long numbers. And ultimately what we're saying is to the student, if they want to keep their recall high, they need to set up a review system whereby Within the first 24 hours, and you, you, you'd have heard that in the little video there, they need to really be making their five minute summary to capture the essence of what they learned that day in that particular subject. Then a day later, a very short review, a week later and a month later to embed it in long term memory. So that's what the review system is based on. Over here on the right, then I have an exemplar which would be more for certainly the exam classes, particularly leave insert, an exemplar of a master revision plan, which we advise to be done for each subject. And this is just one for English, whereby they'd write all the topic areas like the poets they have to study, the play and the, the comparative study. OK, and then the projected overall time needed. This, have their summary notes made in each area, have a, an exam question done, have the teacher notes for each of those topics. Did they summarize the teacher's notes? Because we want them to make their own of it. Have they done any of the reviews, the three reviews that are recommended? And how relevant is that topic to the exam? Well, that's obviously a discussion with their teacher. OK, so that's a little just a brief glance or a hint at what module five is about is about. Module six then is sitting the exam, exam techniques and managing stress. And what are we trying to achieve here? Well, we want the student to learn to mind themselves and manage stressful situations such as exams. Um, on the left there, there's an example of an exam technique, PQAR. So, for example, let's say they're answering a question in a language subject on literature, that they'd make their points, they'll support their points with quotes, they'll analyze and discuss their points, and then they'll refer back to the question at all times to keep focused and to keep the answer tight. If they're doing a question in um, history, we'll say, or geography, they'll make their points, they'll support it with evidence, analyze and discuss, and again, keep referring back to the question so that they're on target. Over here in the right, we have an example of a very useful download, which I mean, these are all downloads that I'm showing you now for the students. But this one is very useful. They're self care strategies for helping them to manage stress and mind their mental health. And every one of those strategies are very applicable to students lives. You know, things like view life as challenges to seek, not obstacles to avoid. Associate with people whom you enjoy and who support you. Surround yourself with cues from positive thoughts, such as 
whatever comes up in this paper, I will handle it. And there's quite a lot done on that whole area of really embedding positive thoughts in the subconscious in earlier modules. So that's just a little look there at some strategies from module six. And here's one. It's a, a relaxation technique also that's uh, well well done in this module. It's from the Alexander Technique. And I have an interview here with an Alexander master, Richard Brennan, based in my Cullen in County Galway. It's fabulous for personal well-being. If a student does this for 10 to 15 minutes a day, they will mind themselves. And you can see there the technique. They place uh, some books under their head, about three fingers thick, so they don't in any way strain their neck. Um, they lie flat on the ground. You can see the posture in terms of the knees and in terms of the hands. And I've done this and I can I can stand by it. It really helps relieve a lot of stress and strain and very, very useful. And listening to Richard and watching him do it with Ruth in the course is also very useful. So that then brings us really to say that I think really what I'm trying to say here is every learner has a story, but we learn differently. We want to empower our learners to know that they have the capacity to learn. And what's important is for them to figure out what suits them and what works for them. And helping the student to see themselves as learners is vital. So we've put a lot into, into achieving that. Now I'm going to share some testimonials with you and I'd like you to listen to Mairead, a principal I've worked with in Colossia Nivon in Inishman. So just have a listen to her now for a few minutes. My name is Mairead Niortha and I'm principal here at Colossia Nivon in Inishman on the Iron Islands. We had Fidel come out and do some work with her students last year and I must say we found it highly beneficial. We did both the study skills and the careers programme. Fidelma's approach is highly motivational and she left her students with a zest for life, with the useful skills that make them lifelong learners and able to assess their own learning practices. Fidelma Gurmilamad, when the school at the Ansalsa, Agus Tadeva, Astachajaiba, Agus Nachfather, Gurmaitulin, Irish. Okay, so now we're going to have a very brief listen to what students say about the programme. And I want to really compliment the students that joined me at my home on the 6th of August this year to actually participate in the videos that are on the course. And you'll notice that their their faces aren't shown. And that's very deliberate because I want to guard their anonymity. And uh, so but they're they're very, they're very vocal and they're very audible in these little clips. So the first clip is of a young boy, Jermith, going into first year and listen to what he says now about some of the activities he participated in. So, Jermyn, what did you learn today about yourself? Um, well, I've learned that I'm much more of an auditory learner and a visual learner than I first than at first I would have thought. I, I knew I was more of a kinesthetic learner, and that showed up in the test already, but... I was surprised by the other two results. Okay. So how can you use that now, that new learning you have about yourself, that new awareness? How will you put that into action when it comes to in um, class? or? Well, like, with working, I've always kind of had a bit of trouble focusing down and concentrating. I think with the stuff that you taught us uh, today, I think it will be easier to kind of knuckle down and get it done, the work. Like. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Now, and next we have Emily, who's going into second year. And I just want to say again that they only participated in about an hour and a half of the overall programme. And the overall programme would be at least 10 hours. So listen to what Emily had to say. And she particularly highlights the skill of summarising as being useful. So, Emily, what did you find useful about the course? Anything in particular? Um, well, I found uh, the information about the brain useful because I wasn't entirely sure because it can be different. Like you can think that just because you're left or right handed, it's like a given that you're right hand, right side of the brain. But it was interesting to see that it's not just always the same. OK. And you found the summarising interesting? Yeah, I did. It was it's useful for studying because if you just want a certain amount of information and it can be very overwhelming if you have a load of it and... You just break it down easily. 
Okay, and which particular strategies did you like best with summarizing? Um, I really liked the ones where you took like the subheadings and the headings and put the information under a certain category and then it like categorized it. Okay, very good. So would you plan to use it? Um, yes, definitely. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, up next we have Isabella who talks about the left and right brain and what she learned there. Well, thank you very much, Isabella, for participating in the course today. What did you find helpful? Um, I liked the brain. It helped me like learn stuff about the brain that I didn't know. Such as? Um, the left and the right. And there was like, the left was like organised and the right was like um, creative and imaginative. And which do you think you use the most? Um, or what did you discover? I think I'm a bit of both, but I'm more of a left. Okay. Well, actually... Being both is really what we're aiming for, isn't it? Because then you're using the, the yeah. whole brain. Well, look, at I wish you well. Thank, Thank you. Sean talks about summarising and how important a skill that is for him. So, Sean, what about the summarising? Was that helpful? That was very helpful, yeah. Yeah. What in particular? Uh, just being able to get all the information and boil it down into certain things. And you can remember certain things as you're writing and going through them. Yeah, you'll remember it more easily then yeah. when you come up with the points for yeah. the summarising. Thanks very much, Sean. Fantastic. And finally, Sarah, who's going into fifth year, also talks about what she learned herself. So, Sarah, you're after participating there in our course, the Switching On for Learning course. What was helpful? Um, what was helpful for me was um, the activities that uh, helped you that helped show you whether you were you had left or right brain tendencies and also what kind of learning suited you best because then you can apply it to your studying in the future and do like what will be most effective for you and what did you actually learn what strategies did you learn that you should use for yourself um, that I'm more a kinesthetic learner and so that I need to do and I can write out um, my exercises and it'll be more beneficial. We had another student in the videos. Her name is Sophie, but she had to leave a bit earlier, so we didn't get her soundbite. But she does contribute hugely to the classes. So thank you very much to the students. I'm very grateful to you and onwards and upwards with your own learning and study for the year ahead. Now, so what do parents say? And look, I've got many parent testimonials and student testimonials over the years, but this is one I wanted to flag for you because this is a very interesting testimonial from a parent. She herself was a further education student when I met her. She went back to learn to be a yoga teacher, but found it very difficult to study. And I've highlighted there in black or in bold, I should say, she says, the learning to learn course taught me how to study. I had no idea. I'd never studied anything in my life. It does help when you're interested in a subject and I was keen to learn. The exercises that I can remember were the different sensory ways we take in information, how short term and long term memory works, how to use mind maps and so much more. Time management, lists and compartmentalization were my new strategies. I was at home with two small children at the time and I had post-its stuck everywhere. I would record myself and then listen back when I was out for a walk. I achieved top marks in all my exams. All the study skills were very practical and manageable and I continue to use them. Now that's a lady I just bumped into a year ago and then she told me how useful that the course was to her when she did it quite a number of years ago. But I thought this was one of the most interesting pieces when she said when my daughter was doing her leave insert, she had post-its everywhere. So not only did it help me, but it also helped me as a parent to help my children. So that's fabulous, really, because that's showing how important a life skill it is for parents also to pass on. And I know from working with hundreds and probably thousands of parents over the years, I know how much parents want to be able to support their, their children and their students with study and learning. And I know that that can be very, very challenging. But this course is designed deliberately for you as well as a real tool and a platform that you can dip into 
with them or without them to see how you can guide them. OK, so I wish you well with that. So then just to have a little look at how you can access the course and what the course curriculum looks like. All you have to do is go on to our website, study and careers uh, forward slash online courses. So let's look at that now. OK. And again, it's about learning at a time and place that suits you. So for students who wish to enroll, they just go on here, click on this. And you'll see there that the subscription for the course for the year is $39.95. And that gives them access for the whole year. So I hope you think that's, that's worthwhile. Now, to let you look at how the content is arranged, let's look, for example, at module one here, your brain and learning. So the first piece there is the video, which is about 62 minutes of my teaching. And then here are the downloadable activities that the student can download. Now, on the course, I give a guideline so that, for example, if you're a first year student, you might perhaps just do the VAC model, which is to find out are you a visual, auditory or kinesthetic learner and the left and right brain profile. And then, for example, after you've completed the VAC model activity, you would download the learning styles advice that emerges from your findings to, to help you understand your findings. OK, and I, I'm deliberately not prescriptive because I have found that sometimes a first year student can be just as interested as a junior cert student or even more so. So. This is deliberately set out so students, when they enroll in the course, they can avail of all of the activities. But as I say, there is a guideline depending on the year the student is in. in module two on motivation, you can see there the main video is essentially like the main chapter. And then the PDF downloads are of all the activities inside in them. Module three, managing my time and learning to plan. And you'll see there, there's a little Abraham Lincoln quiz. The student makes a weekly time chart. They look at their attitude to time management, the homework journal, the study to do list. And then making a master study plan for each subject. Module four looks at reading to learn and learning to summarize and all of the different activities. I just showed you the PQRR, the chapter reading technique earlier, but there's many more there. Module five then looks at memory and recall and the study review system. And again, you can see there's a little frame there to help them learn definitions, make their master revision plans, do mind maps. And there's one done there on rivers and the short and long term videos there as well. And then finally, module six, which looks at sitting the exam and managing stress. There's some exam techniques. There's checklists for them to do to look at have the physical tension in their body, the, a mental and emotional tension checklist and then self-care and well-being advices. So that's just a little glance, really, at how the course is um, very easy to use. It's very student friendly and how you access it. So there I, I outlined to you that it's thirty nine ninety five for a student to have access for the whole year. But where a school decides they'd like it for their students, it's available at discounted rates. So if any school is interested, please contact me directly and we will look at what suits you. So to get the most from the course and we're almost finished. I, I really advise the following. Apply the information to yourself and reflect on what it means for you. So I'd be always saying to every student, personalize it. This is really about you. It's almost like your. it is your personal journey. It's about your self-development. Complete the downloadable activities. If you feel there's too many there, just draw on our student guidelines. Make a note of what gives you a feeling of satisfaction or fulfillment. These are the strategies worth pursuing. The ones you love doing, keep doing them. Because guess what? The brain loves contentment. And the more contented and happier you are, 
the more you will remember and the easier it will be for you to learn. Keep a notebook beside you for your key action points. Now, just because you hear me speaking about it doesn't necessarily mean you will go and replicate it. So therefore, that's why you need to make a point of practicing the strategies. And to say to embed a habit, you need to do it for 21 days. So just keep doing them to find out what you love doing. And finally, use the discussion forum linked to each module. Our email is at info at studyingcareers.ie. We are here to support you. So best of luck with it. I hope you really get a lot out of it. And I want to say thank you for joining me. And you might also spread the word about our new online course, Switching On for Learning, Becoming an Independent Learner. And we'd love to have you on the course with us. Slán agus Take care.